Right, Kate Aids, um, as mentioned in the PowerPoint presentation, I said I will also explain um, and show you the example on the whiteboard just to perhaps make it a bit easier for you. And those of you who are working in the journal books, the physical books and not in the work or on the worksheets, um, I've just got two here. This one says eight column cash journal. And remember we said in this uh, journal books we never work on a single page we work on a double page so i've just shown you that um this is one way of doing it this one this book doesn't have the details or the big bigger details column at the end but you can still use it and just adjust it a little bit so that you can um, use it for your journal so this one is perfectly fine this is an eight column cash journal and then the one that i've used in my example is the eight column creditors journal so once again over a double page but you will see that this one has a bit of a space for the details at the end. But as long as you have columns, you can actually draw columns of your hand as well. It doesn't really matter if you make use of the, the actual journal books. So what we have here on the board is then the format for the cash receipts journal. Um, and this example was for Sparky Electricians. This is on the PowerPoint presentation as well. So they said to us, we must open columns for analysis of receipt, bank, current income, and sundry account. So let's see how do we do this journal? Um, and I'm going to do it with you on the whiteboard, this example. Um, they said we must close off the journal at the end of the month, we, month, which we will do. And this is for March 2019. So if we need to record the transactions, how do we do it? We always first start by giving a heading to your journal. This is very important, grade eight. So let's do this. At the top, we will say cash receipt journal of and then you write the business's name the name of the business this one is sparky electricians sparky electricians then you make a dash and then you write the month and the year this was for march 2019 so march 2019 and then we said we need to number our journals now this one they didn't give us a number so how do we know which number to use if you go to the very first transaction it says that a sparky started his business by depositing um, and so on so we know this is a brand new business so therefore we will number our crj number one if, if you can see it's a business that's already been operating for a couple of months and they do not give you a number, you can use any one. But if it's a brand new business, you obviously have to start with one. Okay, so let's go to the transactions. On the first, S. Sparky started his business by depositing 100,000 Rand via EFT in the current bank account of the business. Okay, so the first column that we have here is the document number column. In that column, we write down the number of the source document from which we got the, the information to record that, that transaction. So in this case, what is our source document? The, the owner deposited this money or transferred this money via EFT. So where will we see this transaction? We will see it on the business's bank statement. So therefore, our document number or document in this case is BS for bank statement. The day is the date on which the transaction took place. It's on the first. Um, in the details column, we write who gave us the money or why did we receive the money. And in this case, we write S. Sparky, this is the owner and he gave us the money. The folio column just in front of your first money column and um, is then um, not used in grade 8. We will only use it in grade 9. But I prefer you to write folio, then you are aware of that small little column, but we don't write anything into it. Then we get to our analysis of receipts column. Now remember we said the analysis of receipt column is like the till in the business. We only record amounts in this column or transactions in this column if we physically receive the money in the store. All right. Now, 
And this 100,000 rand that the owner gave us, did he come with a bag, big bag of money and gave, uh, give us the 100,000 rand there in the toll or uh, well, in the office for that matter? No. First of all, it is actually very irresponsible to walk around with that amount of money. And, 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 and that's why it's much easier to, to rather deposit the money straight into the bank account. So we didn't get the money in the till, in the store, so we can't write and we won't write anything there. So that 100,000 rand was deposited directly in the business's bank account. So all money that we receive must be deposited in the bank account and written therefore in the bank column. Some of them will be first in analysis and then in bank, but ultimately it must, must end up in bank because it needs to show us that this is all the cash that we received during this month. Okay, once we've said, okay, the money, we received it in the bank, we recorded it in the bank column, now we need to say, why did we receive the money? So why did we receive this money? Because the owner started this business, so he gave that money as capital to the business. Now we ask ourselves, is there a column for capital? No, we only have analysis, bank and current income. So for any transaction that doesn't have its own column, we go to the sundry account. So in the sundry accounts, under amount, you will write 100,000. The folio column, we this folio column, we will deal with a little bit later in the year when we do posting to the ledger, but for now we're not doing anything, so you can leave, just leave it open. And then in the details column, we write why did we receive this money, what is the account that's involved in this transaction, and that is capital, because the owner started the business, he gave the money as capital. Happy with that transaction? Good. Let's move on to the second. On the 2nd of March, sublet a part of the building to be clever for 2,600 rand and issued receipt 001. So there we have a document number. The uh, I assume the tenant came into the store, 2,600, still quite a bit of money. But anyway, maybe he brought it cash, maybe... He paid us with a check that didn't mention it there, but the fact of the matter is we did receive the money in the store, in the business, because we issued a receipt. So our document number is 001, that's for the receipt, the day is the second. Who gave us this money or why did we get it? Be clever, gave us this money. Good. We leave the folio column for now in grade 8. Did we receive this money in the till in the store? Yes. So we're going to put it in the analysis of receipt column. Now, grade 8. Before you go and put the money in the bank, you always need to check isn't there another transaction that has taken place on that day where we received money in the till or put money in the till? So if you let your eyes go down, you will see the cash, still on the second, the cash register roll showed 3,500 for services rendered. So there is another transaction. So I am not going to put the money in the bank yet because remember we said we only go to the bank once a day at the end of the day. So you leave the bank column open for now. It will get there now, now. Right, then you ask yourself, why did we receive this 2,600 rand? Because the tenant paid us rent. Is there a column for rent income in our CRJ? No. So therefore, we move over to the sundry accounts. 2,600, we leave the folio column for now, and we state the name of the account. Now remember... In a business, we can have rent income and rent expense. So please write, don't just write rent, write rent income so that you don't get confused, especially when we do posting to the ledger. Um, just trust me on that one, write rent income, that's the name of the account. Good, so then we go to the second transaction on the second. There they said the cash register roll showed 3,500 for services rendered for the day. So our document will then be CR. Or cash register roll. Um, that's what we use, but some textbook also um, speak about CRT for cash register type, or they make a tick, um, and that also represents cash register roll. I'll accept any of those three. You can use um, whatever 
um, but I speak to CRR. Then the day, it is still the second. So we do not usually repeat the, the day if it's already written down there. It makes it, makes it easier for us to um, uh, find transactions and it saves time. And with accounting, we're always working against time. So leave out what you don't have to write. Good. Why did we receive this money for services rendered? We don't have a specific person's name because obviously it might be a, a couple of people um, to whom we rendered the service. So our details will just be services rendered. Right, we leave the folio column open. We definitely receive this money in the store in the till because it's according to the cash register roll there. So we put the 3,500 in analysis of receipt. Good. Now you check. Is there another transaction on the second? No. So now we can say, okay, it's the end of the day. And we've recorded all the transactions that um, applied to our toll. Um, we've um, entered them. What we can do now is, I always uh, tell my kids, we draw a line. That means we close the toll. Right? We close the toll and then we take the money to the bank. Now, what do we do? We add these two amounts, 2,600 plus 3,500. That gives me 6,100. And we write it in line or on the last line of that day's transaction. So we will write over here 6,100. So that is what we deposited into the business's bank account for that day good but now we mustn't forget about this 3500 name we haven't taken it to the other column or another account why did we receive this money because we rendered a service services rendered what name do we use what account name do we use we use current income so you're going to go down in line with this transaction we're going to write 3500 good um that it looks a bit skew now let me rather just write it a bit down three thousand five hundred great that was then on the second the 14th cash receipt for services rendered 940 rand according to the cash register roll so we back over here the document number is again crr the date is the 14th why did we receive this money or from whom? They didn't give us a name, but we received it because we rendered services. Services rendered. Good. We definitely received this money in the toll because it's cash register roll and that is 940 rand. So we're going to write it in analysis of receipt. Check. Is there another transaction that happened on this day? No. So at the end of the day, I can close the till and I take the money to the bank, 940. Then you ask yourself, why did I receive this money? Because I rendered a service. What is services rendered account name in our businesses books? Current income. So I go to my current income column and I write 940. Good. Last one, on the 31st, the bank statement from FND shows an amount of 109 rand received as interest. So, when we get to our document number column, in this case, we saw this transaction on the bank statement. That is our source document. The day is the 31st. Why did we receive this money or from whom did we receive this money? They gave us F and B. That's where we bank. So we write in our details column F and B. Did we receive this 109 rand interest uh, in the store? That's one of the tailors of F and B come and give us the 109 rand so that we can put it in the till. No, the bank automatically added it onto our bank accounts balance because we had a positive bank balance. So we did not get the money in the till. It went straight into our bank account. It was added onto our bank's balance. 109 rand. Right, so it is in bank. Now we ask ourselves, why did we get this money? Why did we receive this money? Because we received interest. Is there a column for interest? No. So I go to the sundry accounts. So in sundry accounts, I write 109. I leave the folio column for now. And my reason or my account that's affected is interest 
income. Once again, just like with rent income, we also can have interest expense. So therefore, it's important to indicate interest income or interest expense. And obviously, if we receive interest, it's an income to the business. Good. Now we check. That's the end of the month. There's no other transactions. They did ask us to close off the journal at the end of the month. That means we need to get um, totals for all of our money columns. So we draw a line. Now mine is going to be freehand. So please bear with me. Pardon, like that. We draw a line. Now very important. We never ever add the... Um, analysis of receipt column we never ever get a total day why is this money that what that we received in the till is it still in the till no it's not every time at the end of the day we took the money to the bank so basically at the end of the month there's nothing left here all of that money has been deposited into the bank account and therefore we never get a total for the analysis of receipt column but we need to total our other columns so let's do that so now you add 100,000 plus 6,100 plus 940 plus 109 rand and if you do that on your calculator you should get and please double check me 107 149 107 149 good then we go on to the next column current income if you add that you should get Four 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 zero thirty five thousand uh, three thousand five hundred and nine plus nine hundred and forty. Then the last column is our sundry accounts hundred thousand plus two thousand six hundred plus a hundred and nine, and that should give you one hundred and two seven zero nine. Good. Now, one way of um, you checking whether you've done your calculations correctly, because we know sometimes we press something wrong on the calculator or a minus instead of a plus and so on, is that my bank account or my bank columns total must always be equal to all my other money columns. So 107,149 must be equal to 4,440 plus 102,709. So you can add that up and then it should show you that these two added together do give you 107,149. So that is just a way of checking. Why else should it be? Remember we said for every debit in our businesses books there should be a credit now that means my bank account when we get to that one uh, a bit later these my bank account will be debited with this total and my other accounts will all be credited can you also see remember we take this away because these amounts have been transferred to bank can you see that every amount do appear does appear twice in my um, journal in my CRJ. There's the 100,000, there's it again. There's the 2,600, which is part of the 6,100, and there's it again. Here's my 3,500, which is actually here. There's the 3,500 again. 940, 940. 109, 109. So for every debit, there is a credit. And therefore, because all these amounts do appear in bank, my bank column must be equal to all my other money columns added together. Good. This is the CRJ. There's one thing that I wanted to mention that I didn't mention in the beginning. I see sometimes that students like to put an R in front of their amounts. People, please don't do that. First of all, we all know that these columns rep represent rand and cent. And secondly, um, it takes a lot of time actually to write these R's that are not necessary. And it also makes it difficult to mark or to read. So please don't put any R's. We know in accounting, when you see an amount um, or a number, it does represent an amount. Okay, I hope this helped you a bit. Um, um, if there's any questions, you can please get back to us so that we can try and assist you. There's then activity one um, that you can now go and complete um, uh, on the CRJ. You can complete your own CRJ and see if you can apply what we've discussed here.